Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm showing you a unique spin on one of the most synonymous solo player footprints in the Rust community. Introducing the Optimum, a solo base for Mega Chad builders who want the latest metas in a formidable package. Its headline feature is a highly defensive open core, which will make any online or offline raid attempt extremely tedious thanks to numerous auto turrets and vending machine roof bunkers. The base stouts numerous peaks inside and outside to keep your opponents constantly guessing as to where you will strike next. Three additional isolated unlootables ensure that you'll likely even have some materials left to rebuild with, which will be a breeze thanks to the roof disconnectable external TCs that also double as flank bases. Quality of life wise, the base has tons of room for storage and deployables, yet remains very easy to traverse. It's also very cheap and quick to set up, yet defendable throughout each upgrade stage. Speaking of which, this is the total build cost and combined upkeeps which is on par with other bases that use the same footprint. Unlike those, this base has a much higher theoretical raid cost thanks to its revolutionary design. Before we get into it, this video was made in collaboration with Lapel Wiz. Today, I'll just be showing you how to build the base. For a full tour, you can find the link to his video and channel in the description. While you're there, give his other stuff a watch and drop him a sub. Anyways, the build is coming up next, right after I thank the sponsor of today's video. Special thanks to Corrosion Hour for sponsoring this video. Corrosion Hour is a gaming community and website that provides useful information for Rust players such as game updates, in-depth guides, base designs, server information, and more. Their incredibly friendly staff and community are always happy to answer your questions in their Discord. You'll often find them hosting monthly events and giveaways too. The team at Corrosion Hour have been longtime supporters of my channel, and they are genuinely good people, providing a great wealth of information and services at no cost to you. So please, check them out at CorrosionHour.com, and be sure to join their Discord community. With that being said, let's jump into the build. Start by cleaning the area with a forward triangle starter unit. For the airlock, use a single door and an outward swinging double door. In the back triangle will be your TC compartment. To squeeze both a TC and furnace in this space, you'll have to place a furnace first, then a TC. Place a single door frame and put a door on it. In the last corner, build a half height shelf and put some boxes on it. When closing the roof, keep the triangle above the loot room wood. If you're worried about players sword raiding the roof to get into your loot room, you can section it off with a double door. For this next stage, we'll add a ring of foundations and establish some early game defenses. Closely follow this build order to make the breach peak defenses. On the outside, we use these double door frames and floors to prevent players from using the defenses against us. Close off the rest of the outer layer and establish three entrances. Further section the square areas with double door frames. Above each airlock, use triangle wooden floors for future expansion. In the corners, place triangle roofs for the breach peaks. You can put progressional deployables in this outer layer or overflow storage until you have the resources to move on to the next stage. Whenever you get a tier 2 workbench and a garage door researched, swap out the garage doors in the core. Your first shotgun trap can go against this wall. Once this is done, it would also be a good time to upgrade the TC compartment to sheet metal. For the third stage, we'll establish the open core. Soft side the wooden triangle floor from your starter and follow this build order.
Then establish the corner loot rooms. Occupy the window frame with reinforced glass after you get it researched and when you log offline. Finally, seal the roof. While the open core is sealed, it's not well protected, so next we'll establish the side entrances. Start by placing two foundations outside of each entrance and four double door frames. Soft side the wooden floor and build up two walls. At half height, put a floor frame with a triangle ladder hatch once you get it researched. Then close off this section. On the window, use a vertical embrasure to fight players on top of your roof or raiders in your opening core. To establish the vending machine bunkers, build a high quality metal wall in the middle of these two sheet metal floors, then get on top of it. Place the right vending machine first, as close to the HQM wall like shown. Do not place it too close to the wall and double door frame on the right. To open the vending machine bunker, simply place a twig square roof. You can also do this from below. Once you get to tier 3, upgrade the floor to sheet metal and place it like so. Establish the open core with boxes, shelves, a bed, and shock contrast behind each roof bunker. Next, we'll establish our external TCs, gatehouses, and miniature wide gap shooting floor. On the entrance sides, place three squares followed by a triangle. Remove the squares and build back with one half moon. Cap it off with a triangle, remove the twig, and then follow this build out. On the distal end, build an external TC. This wall should be two half walls, so we can use it as a roof disconnectable. Then, connect the external back to the gatehouse connection point. After that, build the gatehouse, then outfit it with double doors and embrasures. On the base side, build a double door frame above it. Lastly, establish a miniature wide gap shooting floor. Once the external TCs and custom gatehouses are established, enclose the compound in with high wood walls. Place the first on the corner of the gatehouse closest to you. Try to keep the high wall straight and in line with the edge of the gatehouse. Do the same for the gatehouse next to it. While frequently using Alt Look, merge the gap with the two final walls. Place the furnaces in the corners against the walls like so. Lastly, and most importantly, you'll need a barricade on top of each gatehouse. Use a random electrical deployable to block the socket on top of the double door frame. This will prevent players from building twig to easily grub into your compound. Start by replacing the double door with the garage door and have the roller face away from you. Next, we'll build the roof accesses and splash isolated unlootables. Before you close them in, lock these boxes. Place the square roofs like so, and upgrade the second one to a different tier to keep them from connecting to each other. For a little bit extra upkeep, you can always add an Alonin Tokyo style tower on top of the base. 
This will give you valuable angles over the surrounding terrain, an additional respawn, and a perfect place to isolate a large battery for auto turret circuitry. On top of the tower, you can squeeze in all of these deployables. In the tower chute, place a large battery in the middle triangle. Below the jump up, I like to have a large box with a trap behind it. Throughout the wipe, upgrade these building blocks to their final build grades as you acquire the resources for it. As always, start with the core and work your way outward. For the TC compartment, upgrade everything to high quality metal and then freehand place a vending machine in the doorway like so. Replace this door with an armored door whenever you get one. Replace this double door with a garage door. Don't forget to upgrade the walls of the corner open core loot rooms. Once you have the extra resources, finalize the external TCs. Place the deployables like so. For the TC compartment, jump in with nothing but a medium battery and large box. Place the medium battery as far left as you can, and then the large box in the space next to you. Respawn outside and repeat the process in the other externals. Lastly, place a windmill tower on top of the base and two solar panels above each wide gap defense. The windmill's power should be wired to the battery in the tower to power the most critical auto turret circuitry. Combine and route the solar panel's power to the medium battery in each external. Wire the battery up to the auto turret pod and at least one turret in the compound. Connect the garage doors to door openers that can be opened with smart switches for remote operation. Auto turret wise, all three externals get one for their auto turret pod, three go in the compound, six in the open core, and three on the roof. In the description, there's some blueprints for how to wire the different auto turret circuits.
And with that, the base is done. While it might be overkill for most solos out there, this design is perfect for the Mega Chad builders who want the latest features and don't mind putting in a little bit of work for a revolutionary design. I guarantee you this base will give even the most organized raiding parties a hell of a fight. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing for future content, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.